Hey everyone, today's video is going to be about the Yuzon Vong. The children of Yun Yuzon, the chosen race, or simply the Yuzon Vong. They were the extra galactic species that succeeded in destroying the New Republic during their invasion of the galaxy that resulted in the deaths of nearly 365 trillion beings before the war was over. One of only a handful of races to have arised from outside of the galaxy, the Vong were devoted to a culture of pain and conquest, and for such a hyper-aggressive breed, they possessed a surprisingly high advanced and unique technology that was entirely bioengineered and purely organic. In fact, they hated machines and anything mechanical, viewing such devices as blasphemy. The Yuzon Vong, even though they came from an entirely different galaxy, were humanoid in form, but taller and heavier than your typical human, with less hair on their heads. However, due to their religious beliefs that tended to glorify pain as a state of living, they would remake their own bodies by sacrificing body parts for their gods, with some in elite castes even grafting other creatures' organs onto their own bodies. So, what a typical Yuzon Vong looks like is hard to know, but on average, they had sloping ridge-like foreheads, short stub-like noses that gave them this skull-like appearance, ritual tattoos covering their bodies, and skin tones that varied from gray, yellow, and jet black blood. Though they purposely maimed themselves, they were careful to never let their alterations hinder their ability to function. In fact, Usually, the grafting of other body parts would enhance their skills. Their culture was one centered on sacrifice to their gods, who they believed had offered their own body parts in order to create the galaxy. Therefore, by remaking their own bodies, the Vong were mimicking their deity's sacrifice, thus bringing them closer to their gods. So, because of this religious perspective, the Yuzon Vong saw life as suffering and death as the ultimate release from that suffering. This is why the Vong felt nothing could be learned or understood, unless it was earned through pain. The greatest glory one could achieve was death in battle. For a species so devoted to death and suffering, the Vong actually believed deeply in life. You see, death for them was a prevalent constant presence in life. The death of one creature allowed the creature that killed it to live, and the body would return to the earth, creating new life. Therefore, Life allowed the suffering to continue, for there could be no death without life. Aside from devotion to their gods, the Yuzon Vong society was also structured around a caste-based system, divided between the warrior, shaper, priest, intendant, and worker castes. Though family played a very important part in their culture, with each family group known as a domain, most Yuzon Vong children did not know their biological parents until they left the caste that they were raised in. Because of the importance they placed on these specific caste roles, it was strictly forbidden for members of different castes to breed or even have romantic relationships. The hierarchical order of their caste system went from the supreme overlord at the top way down to the lowly worker caste at the bottom. The supreme overlord was believed to have direct communication with the Yun Yuzon, the supreme god and creator of the Yuzon Vong. Therefore, the overlord was the voice of their greatest god, and so, in command of all their various castes. The Shaper caste were the scientists who oversaw the creation and development of their incredible biotechnology. They were usually shorter than the average Vong and stood out with their tendril headdresses, which were tied directly to their nervous systems. They also had their Shaper hands. Now, as a member of this Shaper caste would move up in rank, their normal five-fingered hands would be modified gradually through their training until reaching Master Shaper status, where they would be given eight fingers. Each additional finger functioned as a different tool, used for their bioengineering. The priest caste in the Yuzon Vong's very strict religious society, as you can imagine, was a very powerful caste. They were divided into several sects, each worshipping a different deity who is a lesser god than the Yun Yuzon. The priests also oversaw the development of the Shaper's various organic technology projects, the warrior caste. Well, as it comes to no surprise, this was the most aggressive and one of the largest castes of the Yuzon Vong. They functioned as the military arm that made up the armies of the Vong. They were trained from childhood to excel in combat and were devotees of their god, Yun Yamka, the Slayer. They wore a living Vondun crab armor. This was resistant to blasters and even lightsabers. 
their weapon of choice was the Amphistaff, a living stick of sorts. That was also a serpent that could spit venom and even coil around the warrior's foe. The smallest of the Yuzon Vong were the Intendant caste, who were essentially the Vong's version of bureaucrats and politicians. They managed their economy, commerce, trade, and organized the massive slave workforce they built out of conquered foes. Interestingly enough, members of the Shapers and even the Warriors could become Intendant castes. The supreme overlord that led the Vong's invasion of the galaxy came from the Intendants before climbing to the top. The worker caste was the largest in numbers of the castes, yet the lowest in status. They served as servants, slaves, and laborers. Some were born outright into the caste, others had failed to succeed in the caste system that they had originally belonged to, while some were not even Yuzon Vong, but instead conquered or shaped species. Then there were the absolute outcasts of Vong society, the Shamed Ones. Now, these guys were the Yuzong Vong whose bodies had rejected their organic implants and modifications. If their body alterations didn't work, it was seen as the gods rejecting them, and therefore they had no worth. Even the other worker caste members treated the shamed ones with contempt. The extragalactic expedition the Vong underwent through the starless void between their home galaxy and the one far, far away took them thousands of years to transverse. But why make such a harrowing journey in the first place? Well, in their home galaxy, surrounded by an asteroid belt, they lived on a tropical planet. This planet was called Yuzon Tar. The name meant Kresh of the Gods, but what made their world unique, at least as compared to the galaxy we are familiar with, is that it was alive, with an intelligence and shared a symbolic relationship with the Vong, who back then were force sensitive. Now at some point, and this is where it gets very interesting, they were caught up in a conflict between two powerful civilizations. They believed to be the Silentium and the Abominor, both entirely mechanical droid societies, which devastated the Vong. But their home world came to their protection and bestowed them with knowledge of how to create living weapons. Their war against the machine races are believed to be the source of their utter hatred towards machine-based technology. As the war dragged on, the Vong as a culture became more and more warlike and violent. They eventually drove the two droid civilizations out of their galaxy entirely, but not satisfied with the mere defeat of their enemies, the Vong decided they wanted to purge their whole galaxy of all forms of mechanical technology. So, they went from defenders to conquerors, enslaving or exterminating most of other species throughout the galaxy. Once they had no more enemies left, the various Vong domains, that is, their family groups, turned on each other, resulting in what best can be described as a devastating civil war, which, when it was finally over, it left most of their galaxy, including their home world, destroyed. With the destruction of their living planet, the symbolic relationship ceased, stripping the Yuzon Vong from the Force, which left them in great pain. This would never go away. This was a pain they became utterly obsessed with, and saw embracing it as the only way to return to the symbiosis they had lost. That is why the body modification practice began, and how they took on their belief in their aggressive gods, that influenced every aspect of behavior in their society. So because they had left their galaxy in ruin, and with no world to call home, they had made refugees of themselves. And so, how they had forced the two machine races to leave their galaxy, they too now had no choice but to find a new galaxy to conquer. Therefore, they traveled the intergalactic void in their grand living world ships for centuries, until reaching a galaxy far, far away. The invasion and the subsequent war are a massive story for another day, but as I said, it would lead to trillions of lives lost and the end of the New Republic. During the war, a new galactic government would be formed to take its place. However, it was called the Galactic Alliance. It became the first government institution since Palpatine's empire to incorporate most of the known galaxy to unite against the intergalactic invaders. Even Luke Skywalker's New Jedi Order found the extragalactic warrior race to be a threat unlike any they had ever faced before. So you see, because the Yuzon Vong were stripped of the Force, it didn't just mean they were no longer Force sensitive. It was way worse than that. They were no longer a part of the Force, that all other living things were. They were more like a void in the Force, resistant to it, which meant the Jedi who encountered them in battle couldn't use the Force directly on them, making them very dangerous foes to fight. 
Thank you so much for watching today's video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what stories of the Yuzon Vong you want me to cover next, and I can do that. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you, always.